outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. And anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Now, this was prior to the tabernacle being set. A few chapters later, we go ahead and God goes, gives the instruction to Moses to how to set up the tabernacle and all the artifacts from the tabernacle. So this was a tent, whatever it looked like. I'm sure it wasn't for Coleman, but whatever it looked like, it was set aside. It was a tent that Moses met with God. It was the place where Moses interceded for Israel. It was the place where Moses talked to God. Let's move on. Verse 8. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tents watching Moses until they entered the tent. And as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the, uh, to the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at the entrance of his tent. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Moses would return to the camp, but his young age, Joshua, did not leave the tent. See, Moses was a mediator for Israel. It's kind of cool because we get a picture of, down the road, the mediator, the ultimate mediator for you and me, Christ. And we get to visual this picture of Moses. But Moses was a mediator for Israel. He lifted them up. He interceded for Israel. When they saw Moses going to the tent, they knew once again that he was speaking on their behalf. And so when we take a look at these three things, this tent of meeting, my question to you this morning is, was your tent of meeting? Where are you spending time alone with the Lord? Because see, this is going to be the main thing, you guys, you know, that Mr. Uh, Pastor Dan talked about last week. You want to change your walk with the Lord? It starts at the tent of meeting. You, you, you want to go ahead and, and make it, you know, make it a little bit different. So come on here and look at me. It starts at the tent of meeting. You see, when you want to fight for your family or you want to fight for your children, it starts at the tent of meeting. When you want to fight to right to know your God, it starts at the tent of meeting. Because at the tent of meeting, God meets you. And this morning, you guys, my heart... This morning my heart breaks because many of us are not at the tent of meeting. So many times I hear former students or I read it who have turned their backs from God because they forgot about the tent of meeting. See, it's at the tent of meeting that these three things, these three areas that have impacted my life, it's been at the tent of meeting that I have learned these three things. And I believe that when you learn these three things, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's going to make the difference in the world that you're walking with the Lord. First one. Starts at Joshua at verse 11. It has to do with Joshua. Joshua did not want to leave. He hungered for God's presence. He hungered for God's presence. That's number one. You kind of hunger for God's presence. You know, some right now, some of you guys may be tuning me out right now. So some of you guys are like whatever. Maybe you kind of hunger for God's presence. You have to. That's what's going to make a difference, you guys. You've got to hunger for God's presence. Come on, have you ever been at that moment in time where you hunger for pizza? Oh, yeah, come on. Where you just crave it? Oh, man, i got to have pizza. 
Okay, I gotta have Pizza Plus, man. Ooh, you know, I gotta have it all on there, the meat and all that. It's, you know, and you're craving it, you're craving it, and you gotta have it, right? And so you go, hey, uh, you know, you call mom, hello, mom, uh, you know what, uh, what do we have for dinner tonight? Liver and onions, come on! Mom, I want pizza tonight, right? I am so hungry for pizza. Mom, can I please, can I please, can I please? Mom, mom, please, Costco has a cheap 10 bucks. Just put, come on, please eat pizza. Okay, all right, yes, you just, you crave it, right? You hunger for it. And you do anything to go ahead and have it. What's your favorite? Favorite dish, favorite food? Cheese pizza. Cheese pizza. What's your favorite food? What was that? Cinnamon roll. Favorite. Don't know. Favorite. 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 In and out. Oh, see? You know, I'm a little hungry, huh? Now you're thinking about it. Taco truck. There you go. Yes. And so guess what? Just as you are beginning to think about it right now, there's a hunger, a craving. And young person, it's that type of hunger that we need to have in God's presence. The second thing that has kept me going is comes from verse 13. In verse 13. Uh, when we move down, it says, Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know who you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your way so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. And the Lord replied, My prince will go with you, and I will give you rest. And then Moses said, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will dis distinguish me and your people from all other people on the face of the earth? And so the second thing that has impacted my life, that has sustained me throughout these years, goes at verse 13, and it's this. Teach me your ways so I may know and find favor with you. Teach me your ways. Be hunger, be hungry for God's presence, and teach me your ways. You see, Joshua was hungry for God's presence. Joshua wanted what Moses had. He was hungry for God's presence. And we also see in Joshua in chapter 1, you know, in that verse when, when Joshua begins to take over, where God begins to speak to Joshua saying, if you will follow the ways, you follow my ways, be obedient, you be strong, God will. I will bless you. I, I will provide for you. Joshua was one who wanted to learn. He hungered for God's presence. The second one was he had a heart that said, teach me your ways, Lord. And in this case, Moses, his plea was, God, teach me, teach me more of you. The third that has sustained me comes from verse 14. It says, Lord, I reply, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not stand, send us from up here. What Moses was saying is, listen, Lord, I will not do anything without you being here by my side. I will not do anything. I will not go ahead and take a further step in decisions that I make. I will not go ahead, seniors, and make decisions without inquiring you first, Lord. May your presence be with me. I do not want to go out and do it on my own will and own power. And those three things have sustained me throughout the years. That's what keeps me going. The hunger for God's presence. Hunger. Get to be hungry for it. I cannot tell you how much 
be hungry, be hungry for God's presence. And the second one is what? Come on. Teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me your ways. Get to know them. And the third is what? What's that? The third. Yeah. Don't let the presence, don't let your presence leave me. Be with me wherever I go. And I believe you guys will use those three things. We will see the Lord in our life. You know, when we talk about this verse in Isaiah 6, here am I. When these three things are applied, I truly believe that God will speak to you just as He spoke to Moses. He will show things to you about your life just as He showed Moses. And the reason I share this with you is because I'm, for me, I know for me, that's how it, what has sustained me through all these years, this 30 year, three years of journey in my walk with the Lord. And I know that if you apply it, I guarantee you guys that He will see you through it as well. I just want to get to know God. Whenever I stand before you, whether it's up here or whether it's in the classroom, I never want to be up there without God's presence. I don't want it just to be Mr. Malone's words. I want it to be God's words speaking to your life. Because I know that my words are going to come and go. I can go ahead and say a bunch of stuff here, and then we go out the door, and you guys are all doing whatever you're thinking. I, I want God to speak to you. I don't want to be Mr. Malone's words. When I stand before you as a teacher, or as my colleagues, as we stand before you as teachers, we want God's presence to speak through us as teachers, to speak to your heart and to your lives. That God will become real to you, that you will make that decision. Question. Do you want to be like Joshua? Do you want to be like Joshua? Who did not want to get away from the tent. And I'm sure that as time went, he spent his time alone with the Lord. He made his way back to camp. Goodbye, Joshua. Presence to be part of God's life. Because I can tell you.